Hi guys, and thanks for joining me today on the YouTubes. This video today is gonna to answer the question, is the Canon EOS RP worth buying in 2020? And the reason that's a good question to ask is because over the last 12 months, just about every camera manufacturer and his dog has released a mirrorless camera. So now you have such a plethora of cameras out there to choose from. So you need to be making an informed decision before you splash your cash. Now I can't answer if all the other cameras out there are worth buying or not, but what I certainly can do is answer the question, is the EOS RP worth buying in 2020? To best answer this question, we need to look at the pros and the cons of this camera. And to do that, let's focus on the photography and the video. First up is the photography. About six months ago, I bought two of these cameras and I've used them since to shoot all of my professional photography on. I've shot portraits, landscapes, and weddings. I've coupled them up with the 50 mm f1.8 and the RF 24 through to 105 mm. Both these are great lenses. Now, given they have a big price range difference, but if you're looking for a cheap lens to buy that gives you great results on this camera, then you should definitely consider the Nifty 50. You can buy this under £100 and it's just an absolute steal. So if you want to take a look at some more of my photos in detail that I've shot on this camera, then you can do that. Just check out my Instagram profile links in the description of this video. So why is it that I'm saying that this camera is so good for photography if a lot of other reviewers out there have been saying it's not a particularly good camera? Well, honestly, there are some drawbacks, but it depends which side of the coin you're coming from. Let me explain. If you spend two or three hundred pounds less than you spend on this camera, then you can buy a faster shooting camera, which is bizarre. In fact, if you spend the same money, you can get the 90D, which shoots at 11 frames per second, I believe, which is double the speed of this camera. So as to why Canon released it with such a slow shooting speed, I don't know. But what I do know is if you are a sports or wildlife photographer, or you want to be, then unfortunately this is not the camera for you. So you should definitely take a look at other cameras and see which one fits your needs. The other issue that this camera faced was the initial eye autofocus, which was really, really bad. But since then, Canon have seen the error of their ways and they released a firmware update which fixed this. And now it's is bloody brilliant. In fact, you can shoot up to between 15, 18 meters and lock onto the subject's eye comfortably. Most of your photos are in focus and it really does a great job. So if you're a portrait photographer or a wedding photographer, honestly, this is going to be a godsend. The build quality of this camera is actually really good. When you pick it up and you feel it in your hand, it feels like you've got a solid camera, which is robust and it's not going to break in a tense grip, let's say. Um, if you're used to shooting with a big and bulky DSLR, then it might be quite a shock to the system because honestly, this camera is small, but I like small. I'm a small guy, I like a small camera and it fits my hands snugly. But if you're a big guy with big hands, then you might find that this camera is just not right for you. But honestly, for photography, this camera really is brilliant. Okay, we're gonna check out video in just a moment, but before we jump into the video section of this video, I wanna tell you guys about a course which I've now released for beginner photographers. This is a course showing you how to use camera settings. If you're starting out into the world of photography, there's a good chance you might be overwhelmed with all the knowledge which is out there. This course starts you on your journey in the right place, teaching you camera settings, which is gonna show you how to take better photos with your camera. And this means you can avoid spending lots of time or unnecessary time taking pictures which you just don't know why they look crap, but they do. If you wanna check this course out, then there is a link in the description which takes you to this course. And if you use that link, you can get 50% off right now. Okay guys, without further ado, let's jump into video. This is the main reason this camera got bad reviews in the first place. And the reason being because it was released without 24 frames per second, and the 4K, well, there's issues with the 4K. Let's redress the first issue first. Canon released, bizarrely, this camera without 24 frames per second. 
And if you're a videographer, you will be scratching your head as to why they did this. I mean, it's the frame rate which everybody wants. You get the nice cinematic look with 24 frames per second. But Canon have seen the error of their ways, right? And they fixed this with a firmware update. So now if you buy this camera, you get 24 frames per second along with it. Second up is the 4K. I'm gonna keep this short and sweet, but honestly, the 4K on this camera is not the best. The quality is great, but the autofocus system is not great. You see, Canon is known for its brilliant autofocus system. Its dual pixel autofocus paired with the eye autofocus is outstanding, and you pretty much can guarantee focus nearly every single time. But its contrast-based autofocus, which it uses for the 4K, well, it's sketchy, it really is. The only time I would use 4K mode on the EOS RP currently, unless they bring out a firmware update for that, is when I'm shooting B-roll. In fact, I made a video actually reviewing the 4K on this camera, especially for B-roll footage. So if you wanna check that out and make up your own mind, you can check the video out showing just above my head right now. Pushing the 4K aside, let's talk about the HD of this camera. The autofocus modes in this camera are brilliant. Like I was saying with the dual pixel autofocus, in my opinion, it's probably the best out there. And it's definitely something, if you're a videographer, that you need to rely on. You need to make sure that if you're shooting video, you can rely on the autofocus and it's doing a good job. Also, the HD, the full HD shooting on this mode is also brilliant. You get fantastic color science through Canon cameras, which means you get beautiful natural skin tones and vibrant colors in your landscapes. And also you get things like 60 frames per second. So you can shoot slow motion footage when you're pairing it with programs like Premiere Pro. Honestly, if you're looking for a great video camera, this is it, but it does have drawbacks like I've mentioned. And if you are in the market for a camera which shoots 4K, then I would probably tell you to look elsewhere. So, is the Canon EOS RP worth buying in 2020? My answer to this is absolutely. The reason being is you've got a camera which is full frame and it costs under a thousand pound. You've got access to a whole wide range of brilliant lenses. You've also got a camera which is particularly good for shooting portraits, weddings, landscapes, out and about photography. Now, of course, if you're someone that shoots sports or you're someone that shoots wildlife, then this is not the camera for you. But any other genre of photography, then I would definitely recommend considering this camera. Also, if you shoot video, if you're someone that's like me, you shoot YouTube videos, you shoot B-roll, you shoot other things like that, or you actually just like to shoot everything in HD or full HD, then absolutely you should choose this camera. Once again though, if you're someone that shoots 4K with all of their work and you're a lot more intensive with your videography, then I would say that there are better choices on the market than this camera. Now everything I've talked about in today's video is available to click on in the description of this video. Anything you click on helps support this channel, so I am very appreciative for anyone that does that. Now, I wanna thank you guys for watching the video today, and if you've got any comments, any questions at all about anything you've seen, then make sure you leave me a comment down in the comment section below. And whatever you do for the rest of the day, guys, make sure it's a good one, and I'll see you in the next video.